religion, faith, the meaning of life, drugs, and escapism. My name is Dre of Yokozu Otaku, and today I'll be speaking about the anime that got me into anime, Serial Experiments Lane. If you like this content, feel free to hit the thumbs up button, and alternatively, if you don't like the content, hit the thumbs down button to let us know. If you want to see more weekly anime news, reviews, and gaming, hit the subscribe button. Lane was one of my first experiences with anime outside of the shows that played on TV as I got ready for school in the mornings. Before Lane, all I knew about the genre was Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon. From the snippets I'd see on these shows, I thought the most anime had to offer was sparkly women in short school outfits or buff superpowered men screaming and fighting. It was unfamiliar territory, and frankly at the time I had no serious interest in these Japanese cartoons. But soon after popping the first worn, rented VHS into the player, I was absolutely hooked, and remained so as I watched and rewatched this series over and over for years. Lane is a dark anime. Even the opening title has a spacey and depressed feel to it thanks to the soft singing female vocalist and acoustic guitar vibes. As with most dark anime, it starts off with a sharp jump off a cliff, or more specifically in this case, a jump off a building by a little-known, quiet, female classmate named Chisa Yamada. Before her suicide, it appears she's talking to someone confusingly not seen by the viewer. Soon after, she lets go of a rail and falls to the street below, hitting a sign, disturbing some sort of strange affair between a man and a woman, and is dead. Rip. Chisa Yamada. Not surprising, this isn't the end of the show, but in fact the beginning of a dark journey into a world where the lines of reality and the internet, known as the wired, start to blur. Before you know it, you're as unsure of what is real and fake just as much as the confused students in the show. Over the span of 13 episodes, you'll learn more about Lane, her family, her friends, and by the end, her purpose. After Chisa's death, the story first focuses on mysterious emails received from the once living classmate. The students start to doubt the reality of what is happening and believe the emails are a hoax, but no one understands why. This event seems to rouse something from within Lane, and she finds herself quickly drawn to the world of computers. Initially, Lane asks her father about owning her own computer, known in this world as a Navi. I remember having a fond interest in navvies at the time and desperately wanted to have one of my own. At the time, in 1998, the technology consisted of large, square CRT televisions, often no larger than 32 inches, VHS cassettes to watch movies, and a home computer that ran dial-up internet at 56k. The idea of using a computer to access a large world filled with a variety of characters using avatars to represent themselves in full 3D was monumental to me. In 2021, we have the ability to do just that, even with ready access to consumer-level virtual reality headsets. But in 1998, the most impressive online experience involved text chat rooms on AOL, or playing the hit MMO of the time, EverQuest, released in 1999. Lane starts off with a small navi, but soon finds herself immersed in the virtual world, playing some sort of detective as she searches for the truth behind the emails. Truth isn't exactly what Lane discovers in her search, though. Instead, she finds a man known as God, who seeks to use her for his own personal means. As the show progresses, Lane seems to lose any piece of personality she might have once possessed as she navigates the ever-blurring lines between the reality and the wired. Her friends attempt to push Lane into becoming more outgoing, often inviting her to join them out at the cyberpunk nightclub referred to as Siberia. During Lane's visits to Siberia, she encounters a DJ who seems to know her, children hackers obsessed with cutting-edge tech, and she meets a man addicted to a new drug on the market known as Excelia, who violently ends his life in a nearly unforgettable scene at the club. In the event you've never seen the show before, I will not explain the story any further. The first time I finished the 13 episode series, I remember feeling absurdly confused. 
As I continued to rewatch the show, I picked up on more of the connections as I was no longer distracted by the shock value many scenes delivered. Each episode delivers a bite-sized portion of a larger picture at work. The show tackles religion, society's reaction to an ever-expanding social network, and lands headfirst into the dangers of a what-if scenario regarding a world where technology paves the way to connecting human consciousnesses. It is a show that will always stick with me and remains in firm memory even as the years pass and many other animes come and go. As a 13-year-old boy, I experienced a lot of personal growth with this anime, and as I grew in age, I have witnessed a tremendous change in technology and how it has changed the social interactions I have with others on a daily basis. For better or worse, technology expands around us and changes our world. Serial Experiment Lane addresses this in a time when rapid expansion of the internet was just budding, and despite its age, showed a lot of foresight into humanity's reaction to it. If you missed out on this one during its release, I can't recommend it enough. And if you have, then I hope you enjoyed my reminiscent overview of the show, touching only on the most tertiary concepts. Close the world. Open the next.